not safe to play uh, to begin actually, with. Actually, I never take the emergency ops. Can you please try to take it for today? I uh, I don't know. I maybe like usual. I will try to avoid it. Why do you choose to avoid it? Because the uh, when I encounter uh, emergency ops, uh, highly chance I will fail. Like eighty percent, I will fail. I fail how about them. how about I mean the point of today's stream is to learn through our failures. So I'm perfectly fine if you fail. Like, but you know, you know that emergency op is good, right? Yeah, the good reward, but the risk is so. Huh? The risk is that bad. I think as long as you know what you're doing, you'll be fine. So try to play a change today. Try the emergency just within this stream. In IS2, right? Um the, the the point of it is that you all should never avoid battles. Battles are very helpful because it gives you hope and there's also a chance for artifacts. I will never avoid battles all that much unless I'm farming encounters. So that's like a word of advice to all of you watching also. This is the first time I got deep color. First time ever. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. We're here to learn new operators. Oh, this is black. This is black. No. I think this you can do it. It's a hard to use deep color. <laughs> okay, um, do you think you could have done anything better? Uh, I think I misplaced the courier. You think you misplaced courier? Okay, yeah. so where, where will you put courier? Uh, the land below it. Okay, the land below it. But then, you do you think courier can survive? No, I don't think so. I don't have any healer to survive the big one. Okay, do you... Okay, because you see the stage, you have those three operators, right? So do you think you can do it uh, without leaking? Without leaking? I don't think so. I think I will. Okay, I'm going to share screen with you. So pretty good operators that you have. So there was a volcano that spawned just now, right? And you got no healers. So you won't want to put any of your range units in the volcano. That will kill them. So definitely put them go and steep color must be on the tiles on the 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 two tiles on the left. Correct? Yep. That's the only way you can use them. So now we you did say just now that you, you place courier here, correct? And you realize that oh this is bad because the wolves keep running past him, right? You notice no one got blocked by courier. Yeah. So, not a good start. Uh, wolves are very easy to kill. So, you might as well just place it like... Okay, how about you You name this for me? If you, Now, you change your run, alright? Uh, you can see the letter and the number, right? Where will you put your courier? Uh, I think I will put courier in B2. Okay, you think you'll put courier in B2? Like that? Yeah. Okay. 
I checked with you on this. Do you know what the volcano does? Uh, deal damage? To who? To everyone. Ooh, okay, at least you know that. So it will damage the wolf. You can kind of get that, right? But it will not damage the Sarkia's caster. You know, the guy with the purple claw? Like, that won't damage him. Because that's that's what turns him oh, from yeah. physical damage to arts damage. So, there, there was someone in the in the stream right now. You stated you could put Poria maybe in B5. Correct? But mm, B5 is not a good choice. Why you shouldn't put Korea in B5 is because the caster might walk down and there's no one healing Korea. So... You run into a problem where, yes, you could block the wolves with Korea and then make the volcano kill the wolves. But Korea's in no way going to kill the caster. So this is not a good tile. It's also risky to put Korea at C4 because, yes, actually at C4, some wolves will get blocked, but it's some. It's not all. So this is also not a good tile. So I actually agree that putting Korea at B2 is quite legit. I mean, it's like the num rule number one of Arc Knights, right? Block your blue boxes. That's the only thing you need to do. So you place Korea there, your blue box is defended. Easy win. Okay. Um, I realized that you put Podenko like this. Am I right? Yeah. So yeah. Wh what were you thinking when you put Podenko like this? Uh, I think uh, for Podenko, I will uh, put him to downside and then pick... The oh, okay. No. But, but why do you f point to the right at first? Because it's the usual thing I use uh, to play this stage. Oh, it's the usual thing that you yeah. do? Yeah. But you need to notice something there. Um, look look at the Gorilla Fighter with me, okay? Gorilla Fighter, look at their resistance. You see the number? Yeah, pretty high. It's 50. That means, right, Arts Damage Dealers will not hurt the Gorilla Fighter very well. So it's actually pretty useless to point a Pudenko there. In fact, the best person to kill a Gorilla Fighter is, strangely enough, Korea. Because Korea is a physical damage dealer. But of course, you, it's not like you cannot use Arts Damage. You can still use Arts Damage. It's just cutting 50% of the damage. So, okay. Uh, you said that. So maybe you'll make a change. You'll, you'll point Pudenko down. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Then, Deep Color, what will you do? Ah, but deep color, it's... Uh, I don't know. You have one more tile, though. Why wouldn't you use it? Uh, I will use the C, eh, the D2, but I don't know where will she point. Okay, so... how You point her here just now, like that, correct? Yeah. But it's quite useless, right? If you think about it, the wolves all come down. Then Podenko help to damage, Korea help to damage. Then the color doing what? Damage some people who run by, but then that's it. You get my idea? So why yeah. don't you just why don't you just point her down like that? Then do you realize that do you see three people pointing yeah. at B3? Yep, yep, yep. So all the wolves go into Korea's lane and then they just die look? Because everyone is shooting at them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you realize there's a problem. Do you see that there's a gorilla fighter? Yeah. If the gorilla fighter touch your courier, right? You know your courier is dead. Yes. Do you think you can uh, do anything? Use the summon of. Uh, how how will you use the summon? Maybe uh, try to block after he pass the. What e three, like. How would it... After he passed away. Uh, after the factor pass the B3 just before reach the courier block by just before some... yeah so just before. okay so you're saying he walks down C8 B8 B7 B6 B5 B4 B3 then you're saying yeah what when he walks into B3 you put the summon down yeah okay that's a good idea so what I would do right is when he walked down D color has a lot of summons okay so when the guy walked down when he walks past B4, you can do what we call a split box. So when the caster walks a little bit to the left of B4, you place a summon down. Yeah. So you will hold the caster, the caster will start fighting with the tentacle, and then 
if let's say that everybody else is not fighting the now you don't have to worry about the tentacle the tentacle doesn't block anyone else it's a one block tentacle so it will only hold the caster it won't like touch any of the wolves so let's say there are some wolves that run past the tentacle while the caster is still being hold on then Pudenko and Deep Color and Korea will attack the wolf but if there's no wolf then what do they do? they attack the caster then okay Caster's too strong. Tentacle destroyed. What do you do? I don't know. Um, yeah, this, that's the part make me confused. I I don't have that much summon, right? Eh? No, you do. Just put another summon. Just put it. <laughs> how, how many actually uh, deep color summon? Five? Five. You definitely have enough. Oh. You, there's only two casters. So just put another summon. Uh. You just you just throw skills and you got Pudenko skills, so uh not Pudenko, yeah. sorry, you got deep color skill. Deep color tentacles, right? The tentacles is um physical damage. So oh it's only three, is it? Oh sorry, only three. But it's okay, just use your summon. You're trying to win the stage. Yeah. So, you hope that they can kill, but if they don't kill, then it's also fine. Pudenko's tentacle skill, right, is that the attack and the defense will go up and the tentacle will start to self-heal. So, that will be good to try to kill the caster. You, so, you just throw everybody's skill, basically. You throw Pudenko's skill, you throw t color skill, you hope the tentacles kill, and then that's it. It's, just, it's not all too bad. You get the idea? Yeah, yeah, I get it. So, you definitely can do that stage with no leaks. Just need to put your operators properly. Okay? Alright, good stuff. Uh, shall we start another run? At the same stage. Nah, <laughs> but different squad. La. It's the same different. stage, right? different squad. That's it. Uh, I think this is better because I have... Uh, better because you have Medic? Medic and Popukar. Okay. So two leaks in the stage. Do you think you could have prevented the two leaks? Maybe I can just try to hold the popo car skill. I think I used popo car skill too early. Okay, we watch my screen again. We look at the way that you position the operators. So you place a pure stream here. Why is this pure stream wrong? Oh, hold on. I didn't set pure stream to E2. Not E2, E1. So, okay, there's pure stream. So you place her here, right? And then you place the go here, and then you place Popoka here, right? right? Um, do you like this arrangement? Mm, I don't know. Mm, I, think, I think this is good. Okay, so I, I want you to take notice of something. Um, do you see Popoka's range? Oh, yeah. So you see that she's on this tile, and then she got an extra tile into the out, right? Tile? Yep. Your Potenko 
what tiles is she, is she covering? She's covering E6, E7, E8, C6, C7, C8, correct? Yep. Who's, oh, yeah. what enemy is on B6, 7, and 8? The dog? Technically, the dog no. might enter B6, yes, but actually the dog will just run diagonally down. But usually, the person who will walk down the B lane is the big guy, right? Like, either the, the punching, the, the hammer guy or the caster, correct? Yep. So, do, do, would you agree with me that B7 and B8 are useless tiles right now? Yeah. Then, would it not be better if you take Pudenko here and you point Pudenko to the right so that Pudenko can help Popuka? Uh, so it's not really the best placement because you could help Popuka, but that was not done. But, okay, you notice there's a volcano um, at the tile that I'm pointing. Yep. So we learned something just now, right? We said that the volcano can damage the enemies. Correct? Yeah. Now the volcano is a diamond shape. So... Because the dogs run diagonally down, there is actually a place where you can put Pudenko so that the dogs can also take volcano damage. Do you know what's that tile? Okay, think, think, think one set at a time. There's a tile where you place Pudenko and because you put Pudenko there, the wolves get damage from Pudenko. Eh, hey, not Pudenko, sorry. Popuka, my bad. Um, so there's a tile that when you place Popuka down, they will take damage from Popuka and the Volcano. What tower will you choose? But P Popuka is still safe. B3? B3. So, putting B3 here. I agree. So, they are, they will get into the Volcano. Yes, they will get damage and all. But, if you put at B3, right? So, basically, the big guy must come down, walk, and then he's going to get damaged by Pudenko. But he's going to hit Pudenko, correct? Yeah, Popuka. So Pop uh, sorry, uh, Papuka, <laughs> I, similar names. So he he will hit Papuka. But then you realize that that means Papuka needs healing, correct? Yeah. So if you put a healer here, a bit of a problem, right? Because the healer is in the volcano. Yeah. Then the healer will heal herself and Papuka. Uh, Papuka they will try to fight the healing. So a bit of a problematic tile. So. What if I tell you, instead of putting Popoka here, you put Popoka right here? You know why? The wolves will run down diagonally. Yeah. They will still get stuck onto Popoka because this Popoka's tile is in the way of the wolves. When they get stuck onto Popoka, they will get stuck to a bit of the top side of her. And the top side of her, what happens? It's still in the volcano. Ah. You look at the shape of the volcano, it's still there. They will get stuck between C5 and B B5. So this tower of Popuka is actually really strong. Because it helps you to get hurt. It helps you to damage whoever that's coming out. And at the same time, um, they also take volcano damage. Of course, the big problem now is the big guy doesn't take uh, volcano damage, correct? Now, Papuka needs healing. So what could you do? You give her a healer. Then there's also another problem. There's a Pudenko who's not really doing anything. So you kind of want Pudenko to help. So what you could do is you can place your Pudenko maybe somewhere down here and help like that. This is a choice you can choose. You could place pure stream in here and then have Pudenko to be in the volcano and then just place it like that. Uh, where did Pudenko go? What the fuck? Pudenko there is. Yeah, there you go. You can place uh, Pudenko in front of pure stream and then just face down. So she will take damage but pure stream will still focus on healing Pudenko more than Popuka. And 
what you could do is that maybe when the big guy is nearer to Podenko's range, you turn on Podenko's skill. Sorry, not Podenko's range. When the big guy is nearer to Popoka's range, you turn on Podenko's skill, you slow him, and then Podenko and Popoka will both attack him at B6 before he even touches Popoka. This is what I would consider as the best, the best way to use your operators. This might be the nicest arrangement you can go for. But you'll learn some stuff here and there. Lah. Like, even if I use your previous formation, where you put Pudenko and uh, Papuka like that, it's not... It definitely can still be improved because your Pudenko isn't really doing a lot. Yeah. Your Pudenko should help Papuka to add more damage, is what I would say. Okay. But interesting, interesting play styles that we've gone for. Um, it's okay. It's improvement. We've beaten stage one. Let's continue to watch you. No, no, this is not Crown oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I wait? Who, who are your? Who's your fourth operator? Uh, Korea. Korea. This is... High risk, high reward. I suggest you try... I suggest you try okay. the emergency. Okay, let's try, let's try. High risk, high reward. Okay, this is not a challenge run. I literally asked him why did he not take any 6 stars and he said I don't start my run with 6 stars. My mind is confused as well. I don't think he would fail the stage. But I would do the stage a bit differently in terms of the <laughs> the deployment order. But the more I look at it, the more I think nah, I think it's fine. I think he he's done it quite okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's happening? What's happening? I spoke too soon. No. Uh, I think I misplaced the medic again. No, I do say I do have to say that the your arrangement of the operators was quite nice. Um I think you placed Popoka last. Hey no, you who do you put last? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Who, who do you and put last? Was it Popka? Uh, the, the last one I put, I think the... I think it was Pure Stream, right? Yeah, Pure Stream. So you put Podenko like this, and then afterwards you put Popka like this, yeah. and then you put Pure Stream. Yeah. So you need to understand that uh, when you put a certain operator last, right, they become the last thing that the enemies will attack. Yep. In this entire squad, who... Oh, I'm streaming this squad? Oops. So in, in, in this entire... Squad, right? Who has the highest defense? Mm, Popokar. Eh, Popokar or Korea? I don't know. <laughs> check. You go and check. You're in your account. You can see. No, no, no. Without scale, by the way. Just, just tell me who has the highest defense. You click on operator. You check your courier and your Popokar. Courier defense is 356. Okay. And Popokar. 
245 couriers de ice. Exactly. And all the enemies over there, right, are dealing physical damage. So Korea, <laughs> Korea has the highest defense out of everyone here. Clearly, it's not pure stream. So kind of something that happened just now is that when your whole entire run fall apart, right, because pure stream is the last Wait. person you deploy, they started attacking pure stream. And pure stream cannot survive the, the sniper attack. So pure stream being the last deployed has a lot of problems. I know that you deploy Korea first because it's a vanguard, but now the biggest issue is that your yeah. operators cannot survive. So you might want to have a change of idea. So what I would do here, okay, you also try to protect an ingot which was at D7, which I think is okay. It's perfectly fine that you want to try to protect an ingot. Placing Popoka down first is probably the better move that I'll go because you place a blocker, you place someone that can damage the, the enemies. Korea yeah. can damage the slugs, but Popoka can do a better job. So you, you put your Popoka down. Um, the choice of where you point your Popoka is a bit there. Uh, whether you point your popoka to the left or down, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, I would I would face it down also because sometimes the parachuter stays still. Then the next person that I would place to kind of help over here is that I want you to notice this. Uh, what do you think about your the way that you place Budenko? I don't actually I don't know which one is better because uh, uh, Budenko have better range if uh, I put it uh, put it down put it to the side but. Uh, I think the crabs need arch damage more. You're correct. So the crabs need arch damage. Yeah. But the, so there's I... a bit of a problem. So, the, but, but what I mean by there's a problem, right, is that if you put Podenko here, while the crabs needs arch damage, you realize that who's the the only person damaging the C lane? Yeah. Who is it? It's only Papuka, right? Yeah, it's only Papuka. So it's a bit of a challenge. You leave Popoka to fight on her own. You don't realize that Popoka is actually not handling just one lane. Eh? Popoka is handling two lanes, D4 and C5, correct? Because yeah. the enemies all come in like that. So it's actually better that you have people to always help the damage as much as possible. This is like one of the, the deployment ideas of Arc Knights that I would say, like what goes through my head when I think of how to beat a stage. Point yeah. all your damage in one tile, or if not two tiles. So, what I mean by that is, for example, you know right now that there's a crack coming in the D lane. So, Popoka is going to damage the D lane, correct? Hmm. Then, let, you have other damaging operators. Okay, you place a Podenko. Then, Podenko have the D lane. But there's another lane. There's a C lane, right, at the bottom. Yeah. Then, instead of having your operators to deal with one lane, then, if you can maximize their range, Make them help two lane. You remember the training stage TR15? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the one with Jessica? Yeah, yeah. That one stage is teaching you to never point your operators only in one lane. Point your operators in two lanes. Make them help more. TR15 is teaching you to put your operators to cover more of the map. So it's much more killer if you actually point Popoka down because she's helping more yeah. places. Then, if you need a bit of a distraction, but actually by now, right, after you place your Popoka and your Pudenko, you will probably have a problem because the the metal crap will probably start to walk onto Popoka's tower. So, what should you do? Place a healer? Look. Just place your pure stream. Yeah. Or, if you don't place your pure stream like that, actually, you can start to place your pure stream now over here. Pure stream is a problem where I think the further the operator the the further the operators are, the less the healing. So it's best that you put the operators close to her. So you start to put your pure stream down now. It's not an issue. Then you put Korea. Because Korea has the highest defense. So even though the snipers or the range enemies are attacking, they attack Korea who have the highest defense. So you get the idea? So th it's not yeah. like you place wrongly. The, the, I think the, the, the difference here is the order. Sometimes the order of the operators to place really matters. I always have this rule that I set on myself. The last person that I will deploy also is the person with the highest defense. 
this is a rule that I try to keep because that person will be the distraction. You put your highest defense operator last so that all the damaging units, all the damaging enemies will point their attacks at the highest defense person. You get the idea? Yeah, so yeah, that's the thing. Okay. So not all too bad. Yeah. 